Hello friends, welcome back to our channel. This is Sergio the Boss Repairs, and today is the part three of this amplifier we are busy restoring the 11,000 watts Camtech amplifier. So, what we're gonna do on this episode is I'm gonna do some injection of voltages and let's check and see if we are getting voltages on the board because what you must understand is on the drain of the power MOSFET we must get the 12 volts that come in from the power supply and we must see if we get gate voltages yeah and from there on we can see we can move on from there so what i will do i will just probe my power supply um, um, negatively into the ground and the positive i will touch it in between the remote and the positive the 12 volts to make sure that i'm supplying the voltages and i will just prop my multimeter um, ground to the negative and we we'll check the voltages together so i will put my i want to put my multimeter on voltage dc dc voltage and then i have to supply the voltage 12 volts and 1 amps i'm gonna supply it and then i can see it's taking 0 0.2 watts which is not bad because i know the power mosfets are not there so what i will do is i will try to check the the, the mosfets area in the middle is supposed to be the the drain which is the 12 volts so i will just go start here so i get 12 volts which is good i go here i get 12 volts which is good 12 volts which is good 12 volts 12 volts 12 volts so all these power mosfets if i install them i know they were gonna get their supply voltage that they need to get and i'll just quickly check this side i'm still getting 12 volts i'm getting the 12 volts 12 volts 12 volts 12 volts 12 volts so all of them i'm getting the 12 volts of the drain and i'll just check for the gate voltages which is it should be 5 volts i think it's 4.99 volts so it's, it's you can round it up and say it's 5 volts the same thing 4.99 volts 4.99 volts 5 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 volts so okay I'm getting voltages there by the MOSFETs I will just check this input diode 11.83 volts 11.87 volts so I'm getting also voltages there which is a good thing I would just want to check this IC start by this capacitor here it's getting 5 volts I want to check this capacitor here it's getting 4.8 volts this diode 11.99 volts so this is pretty cool I'm getting all the voltages on the board that's 12 volts 11 volts so one thing I notice about the ICs is if you don't get a shot on the capacitors around the IC then the IC is most likely to be okay and still in working condition I will just plug the pins of the IC I have 5.5 volts here it's probably ground 4.9 volts probably ground Five volts that looks like the SEC. 4.9 volts. 11.55 volts. 5 volts. It's not that good. Ground. 5 volts. Ground. 2.1 volts. 3.6 volts. 2.0 volts. 4.8 volts. So that's good, I'm getting voltages there. I'm also getting voltage on the trans transistor. It's 
circuit is incomplete so I'll just check the other IC here yeah? see it's giving 5 volts 3.8 volts 2.5 volts 5.0 volts over the ground 3.9 volts 2.8 volts and 4.9 volts What I can see here is the voltage supplied to the input circuit is okay, which tells me that this amplifier board is still solid and in good condition. Just quickly just check in to see if I can. The voltage is still here, the input circuit. And if I happen to turn this board around, I'm oh sorry. Just make sure that the ground is propped nicely. So I will just try to check the capacitors. in from here it goes through the fuses you see the fuses you should get 12 volts if you are troubleshooting this um, this power amplifiers or car amplifiers the first thing you must understand is the remote needs also a 12 volt actually for the for the amplifier to switch on so the remote and the 12 volts they need the same voltages so the amplifier can switch on the remote the function of the remote is just to switch on the anti amplifier but the 12 volts power rail is the main power rail of the amplifier that's why i had to check the the this ic it doesn't look damaged on that this look perfectly solid it's getting a little bit warm it's not even taking power but i can feel that is a good sign so this power 12 volts come in here through this positive goes through the five fuses one two three four five you see the fuse connects the port to this other side so if you have a blown fuse you can see there's a bridge here and the fuse transfer this power from this side to this side so if there's no power transferred along this bridge there won't be power enough to switch on there will not be power to switch on the amplifier so that's what's the work of the fuse you can see all, all two sides you must get 12 volts and these 12 volts has capacitors which 
which are be which work with it and these 12 volts is also connected to the plane of the of the power mosfets you can see here the drain is the middle pin you can see all the middle pins are connected here and this is a drain here also you can see so the 12 volts which is being regulated by these ICs then goes through the rectifier diode before it goes out to the output section so right now the output section has no voltage we don't find any voltage in the output section which is properly fine because the input section has to have correct voltage and all the components installed for it to give out the output voltage so what I'm saying is the output voltage comes from the input voltage uh, but the input voltage comes from the main source so without the correct input components and correct input rectifiers and the MOSFETs you won't get any output voltage just like I showed you now so what I will do is I will just try to go to the data sheet let's look on the power MOSFET that come out from this amplifier and then we see what power MOSFETs what what do they do and what is their cap capacity and capabilities we'll just quickly check through the data sheet and then we'll check for these power MOSFETs and understand what they are so this end because it uses power MOSFETs both in the input and the output section you can tell you this is a power M it doesn't use transistors it's just power MOSFETs so this is the power amplifier and this can give so much sound if this is right again so without taking so much time this part 3 i just showed you how the voltage goes on the board and then i will just go now to the data sheet on my computer screen and show you how we check and then we hopefully we can see which which replacement parts are we getting for the builder for this amplifier so if you've been watching the part one and part two thank you so much for watching we appreciate you and thank you so much for staying tuned to our channel don't forget to subscribe because that's the only way you can help us like and subscribe our videos and you give us the motivation to do so much more and more interesting content just like this one so i hope this helped you because when you need your power supply to troubleshoot it's just like if you if you have an oscilloscope you can probe to see if you're getting the the waves the wave signs here and which I will just quickly show you now now we just turn the boat around so you need projects like this to fully understand how amplifier circuits work car amplifier circuits work and you must know this all these capacitors are output capacitors and they won't also get voltages because the capacitors on the input are these ones managing the 12 volts so you ask me maybe why said so why are the output capacitors bigger than the input capacitors this uh, car amplifier what it does is amplify the sound takes in less and brings out more it's just like an inverter circuit so it gets in 12 volts and these are 25 volts capacitors with 200 and 2200 microfarads so they can be used to amplify and keep stable the, the the 12 volts that is coming in so like these four years for this coil and these other four for this coil they work together to bring the 12 volts in the coil boost of the voltages then when the voltage comes to the output section with the help of the rectifier diodes and the power MOSFETs at the input circuit you can get more voltage which goes out to the output and that's why you get more bigger capacitors and more beta capacitors at the output section so <coughs> um, what I wanted to show you is just if I put the give the power and then I want to probe with my oscilloscope and check now I see on the comment someone asked me about this cheap oscilloscopes. These cheap oscilloscopes, which cheap oscilloscope can they buy? But I have noticed that these cheap oscilloscopes they don't really work that much like the bench oscilloscope and the one that 
which is we always get. So I can plot my ground here. Oh, let me just put it on. This uh, Henry is a MOSFET tester and an oscilloscope all two in one. So I want uh, oscilloscope. So I can prop my ground. I know this is the ground. I can also prop it on the negative, but there is okay. I will just quickly go here to go on the drain. It shows me there's current there. I go to the okay. Okay. In the scoring there, but when I come here, just okay. you can see. Side. I don't know if I'm probably the ground nicely, I'll just check it from the side. There's a gate voltage. There's a drain. So really, I I don't really fancy this um, cheap oscilloscope, they don't really give you what you want. Thank you. 